Welcome everybody, it's Tutorial Tuesday, which means that I'm here for another tutorial. I'm getting a lot of questions about um, how to improve or tips to improve Erdvadanya Rasana or tips to improve wheel pose. Now we've talked about in other classes, we've talked about in my beginner series that you need open front body. So you need open hip flexors, quads, belly, you need open shoulders, you need a strong back, you need strong shoulders. Um, but I'm not gonna kind of go into that whole area. I just wanna give some quick tips, some technique changes to get you up a little bit more in your wheel to find a little bit more ease in the wheel. Um, and first, let's just start off by going how I set up for wheel and how I recommend my students set up for wheel. So come onto your back, and as you come onto your back, take your feet right or your heels right underneath your knees. What you'll hear a lot of times is take your middle fingers and brush your your heels with your middle fingers. That will get your knee over your heel. For some of you, it will. It will. It will. It. I'm just so used to saying wheel today. It will, but for most of us, it won't. And the reason for it is. It's gonna depend on your anatomy. It's gonna depend on arm length, leg length, torso length. So just look down and go, knees over heels in that ballpark, good. And then what's traditionally taught is get your feet hip width distance. I'm gonna go away from that a little bit. I'm gonna tell you to take your feet a little bit wider than hip width. Another thing I'm gonna tell you to break away from it, and I find, and most people find it more comfortable, is to actually turn your heels. You can see here, I'm gonna turn my heels in and my toes out. So my toes are kind of pointing towards two o'clock on the right side. My left toes are pointing to about 10 o'clock, maybe one or 11 on each side, just a little bit. You can adjust that angle to play with. And then with my hands, this is another area where people get a little bit caught up on, is they think their fingertips have to face directly forward. Again, for some of us, this is gonna be possible. For others, this won't be possible to maintain any sort of power or comfort in the shoulders. So what I recommend is wrap your elbows in towards each other. You want your elbows right, right over your shoulders or in that direction. Your hands a little bit wider than your shoulders. And as you wrap the elbows in, if your hands start to turn out a little bit, right? So again, just like the feet, 10 and two o'clock, allow them to. You could even really take your hands straight out to the sides, fingers straight out to the sides. If that's comfortable, you could totally do wheel just like that. But I have a little bit of an angle in my hands and you can see it here in the video. But my elbows, I'm not letting them flare out. I'm wrapping them in towards each other. I take a breath in. And then on the exhale, I'm pressing in my hands and I'm lifting up. And then I make any adjustments I need to. Pressing equal weight into my feet and my hands. So I do a little bit of shifting forward and back. But I'm trying to get away from here by pressing as much as I can into my hands. Like I'm trying to press my mat away from me. Right, and then to come down, I'm just gonna tuck my chin, come all the way down. Right, I'll show it here with my fingers completely turned out. Again, for some of us, this is gonna feel really nice, and for other people, it's not gonna feel good. Take a breath in, and then press down, lift up. And you can see my fingertips are facing outwards. It's just creating a little bit more rotation in the shoulders to find a little bit more space. And then tuck the chin, come all the way down. Right, so that's, that's it. That's the placement of the hands. I actually prefer a little bit of a turnout of the hands, a little bit turnout of the feet. I'm trying to wrap my armpits in towards each other and press down, right? Two things can go um, a little bit, I wanna say two things can help get a little bit further. If you, if you think you struggle, and I would say do both of these, if you think your struggle, and it's hard to kind of know, um, is from a strength issue in the shoulders. Find it really helpful to take two blocks. So if you have two blocks, I would, get, I would take two blocks. If you don't have blocks, I'd order blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can kind of use books, but it's a little bit trickier. And you're gonna place them where your hands go, right, either flat against the wall, or I actually like, prefer it to be a little bit at an angle. So you can kind of see I'm just angling them up there. So when I press my hands into the blocks, they don't slide down. And you're gonna to have to play with this, right? Because it's hard to go, okay, is that shoulder width distance? And then as you set your hands back for wheel, you're gonna take your hands, so the heels of the hands come onto the blocks. I'm actually gonna take my blocks in just a little bit. Again, hands a little bit wider than my shoulders, feet a little bit wider than my hips. Elbows wrap in towards each other. Take a breath in. And then on your exhale, press into your hands, press into your feet, come up. But right elbows want to flare out. Wrap the armpits in, press into your hands, lengthen through the outside of your armpits. And then to come down, tuck the chin, come all the way down. What this does 
is it gets a little bit more height to go from this position to here is a lot harder than going from here to here, right? So it gets you a little bit out of your stuck point. Another thing is it, it does is it shifts a little bit more weight into the feet, which then your legs can take a little bit more of the weight if you're weaker, right? I don't want to say weaker, if your shoulders aren't strong enough yet, right? Because you're strong, you're just not strong enough yet, right? And sometimes it's just creating the muscle memory in the shoulder, so you might be strong enough, but by going through with these blocks here and doing a bunch of reps with the blocks of pressing down, it just creates that unstickness, unstuckness in the shoulders. I know that's not like verb, uh, English correct or, or <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with that, or even proper grammar, that's what it is. Proper grammar to say unstuck or unstickiness, but that's kind of what it is. You get stuck in this point, right? Um, so that's option one. I would try this. Everybody who's having trouble with their wheel, or even if you don't have trouble with your wheel, try it with the blocks like this, right? You want a little bit of an angle. And again, I'll show the setup of the hands, right? We want the hands, the, heat, the palms on the block, the fingertips rolling off. Elbow creases wrap in, take a breath in, turn my feet slightly out, and then on my exhale, press into my hands, into my feet, and I lift up, right? Armpits wrap in, and then I slowly come all the way down. It may take a, a couple times of, of adjusting the blocks to get your blocks right, to get them so they, that way they sit here where you can push and they don't slide. Another option that can be really nice, and I'm actually gonna grab two more blocks here. Right, and you can, you can start with two blocks. You can, if you have a bench, a really sturdy bench, or like a windowsill that you can put your feet onto, I recommend that. Another option is if you're just tighter in the shoulders or tighter in the front of the thighs, is to get the feet higher than the shoulders. So here, I'm gonna put my feet up against the wall so the blocks don't slide. If you have a significant other or some kids and you wanna give them a task, you can move yourself up and then just have them put their feet on the blocks so they don't slide. But I'm gonna get my feet on the blocks, set my hands like I normally would, take a breath in, and then on my exhale, I'm gonna press down into my wheel. What this does is it helps take some of the length out of the quads and shifts a little bit more weight into the shoulders. So if you're on the stronger end and you think you can press up into wheel and you wanna experience a little bit more ease, right? Try the feet on the block, right? feet on the block, but try to get the majority of your feet on the block. If you need to, again, if your feet don't fit on the block up against the wall and you don't feel stable, take your feet out, maybe even take blocks. So you got four blocks here, right? So then when you push, it doesn't go forward. Or maybe you put a stack of books here, right? Just to keep it. What you don't want to do is press into your block and then have it slide out from you. If you have an extra pair of feet that you can borrow from somebody, what you do is you just have them sit up against it like this on the opposite side. So I'll do it here with the four blocks, right? This is ideal is to have the entire foot on the block. And then I set my hands. I want my elbow creases to wrap in or my elbows to wrap in. Maybe I turn my fingertips all the way sideways, right? If that feels okay. I'm gonna take a breath in. And then on my exhale, press into my hands. Press into my feet. Right, this takes a lot of pressure on the back for me. And we're going to try it this way too. But don't let the elbows bend. Armpits wrap in, press in, And then slowly come all the way down. This one is perfect, like I said, if you have a bench, right? A bench about like that high, right? That you can put your feet on, right? If you have a bunch of blocks, if you're lucky enough to have a bunch of blocks, right? You could even go higher with, say, six blocks. But I'm not going to unless my feet or against my blocks or against somebody or somebody's feet, right? Or against the wall, right? So try it out, right? Try the hands on the blocks. Try just adjusting the hands all the way out, all the way forward, maybe halfway in between, which is my preference is to be about here in my wheel pose. Start, take a little bit wider of a base, hands a little bit wider, feet a little bit wider. The narrower you go with your feet and with your hands, the harder it becomes, right? The more range you're gonna need. So start with a little bit wider of a base, Get your hands and your feet elevated. Give that a try. Let me know what you think. Have a great day. Namaste.